Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrex. And of course, welcome back to the sandbox mode, where today we're likely in the last of the sandbox videos before we go over to the campaign itself and start the brand new quest for Nita. So in today's video, what we're doing is building up a third ship, which is going to act as both the cargo vessel for the little drones, but also a general anti-ship ship, very similar to the cram cannon ship. However, this will be using advanced cannons, and I'm thinking either 250 millimeter cannons or we could do something similar to this. Now, the reason is the very first enemies we're going to face are going to be quite lightly armored. Even things like the crossbones don't really use much stacked metal or anything else. So loads of small hits can very quickly stack up and cause some serious damage. And this might be the last time I can really do that. Later on, I'll probably be transitioning into things like mortars, things like rail guns, maybe even lasers and particle cannons. So... For the time being, I want a rapid fire high explosive cannon because that just seems loads of fun to me. Is that the best thing to use? No. Is high explosive the best at this kind of caliber? Also no. But I think it's going to be a load of fun. Now we are still trying to stick with the idea of specialist crafts. So this one is going to be lightly armed, sorry, heavily armored with light weaponry in terms of the cannons, maybe only two, perhaps three, and will focus solely on enemy slow craft. So things like the crossbow. I mentioned before, things like the Marauder, things like the Jacobs, what's it called again? The Jacobs, Folly, just things which can't really move out of the way. So very slow shells with a decent impact for their size and absolutely loads of them. Now, of course, this hole was built off camera and as usual, whilst I was incredibly sleep deprived and essentially what I was originally going for was just a pure cargo container. Since now in the campaign, I believe you can't have centralized resources, so the resources are actually on the vehicles themselves and you have to transport them. I wanted a cargo vehicle which could at least go into combat. But instead, I think we're going to turn this into mostly a combat vehicle which happens to have a lot of cargo, so going a bit down the other route. Now, of course, we could just have the cargo vessel always out of play, following the rest of the fleet along, but I just think that's a little bit boring, and I would much rather have the ship itself able to fight back. And so, I built this hull. Honestly, I quite like it. It's a bit chunky, it's a bit weird looking, especially near the bottom, but I think it looks unique enough, and I think it's going to be incredibly easy to really armor this thing up. So what I think I'm going to end up doing is that the bottom section here is going to be for the AI and everything else underwater, and then the top section is going to be for the weaponry. That way we can have a nice clear divide in the middle, and it means we can armor it up even more. And once again, the weapons aren't going to be very big. They're only going to take a tiny amount of space since we're kind of going with the weapons we used on the anti-air variants of our little drone boats. Now, one thing I need to mention straight away as well is right now the only PID currently active is roll and pitch. That's why it's so weirdly high in the water. This will be much lower by the time we're done. Not only are we going to be adding loads of weight, but I'm also going to have a PID control on the altitude, so it's going to be completely adjustable. Is there a reason why you're sinking? Turns out the steam engine was broke since I was messing around with the engine earlier and forgot to replace pretty much everything. So there we go, it's now floating as intended. Still a little bit low in the water, but once again, we can always adjust that nice and easily by just adjusting the PID. Right now, it seems like being lower in the water like this just makes them way more defensive and just a bit better versus a lot of the enemies we're currently facing. So with all that out of the way, let's start messing around with some of the weapons. So, really, there is two ways we can go about this. Currently, this isn't really armoured up, but we could have the weapon on the bottom, which goes against what I just said, I admit, and then have just a thin layer of the gauge increases and cooling units going up through the middle. So, nice and easy to defend, layers of armour around it, and then, of course, the turret cap at the top. That way, the bulk of the turret is actually at the very bottom and only vulnerable to things like torpedoes, whereas cram cannons and smaller advanced cannons will likely never hurt it. The second way we could do it is the original way. We could just place it in the midway point, and then we have all the space underneath for everything else. I think it depends how much material and how much space I'm going to need to carry that. So I think the most efficient material storage is the largest one, isn't it? If I could see it, which would be good. There we go, the cargo container. And that is not that big. Right now, we are currently sitting at 4,200 volume. 
my cap for this is 10,000 and we're looking at 100,000 to 150,000 resources, which sounds a lot, but just a reminder that those tiny little boats over there are, well, the one's less than 35,000 and the other one's only just about 40 something thousand because of the missiles. Even the Marauder is almost 40,000. Still can't wrap my head around the new um, prices. I mean, these are 56,000 materials each. Yeah, we don't really need that space for all that material. I think if we were going to use this to make fuel as well, they'll probably need more space. Okay, let's have the weapons on the bottom then. I'll be right back once I've made a quick test turret, just based off the original. So, this is a slightly larger version of the original. This is bringing us up to 58,000 resources, and the functional components end here. We could have made it a little bit smaller, but the thing is, this also allows for way more armor on the sides. So it depends on which is more risky, having less armor on the sides, but having it way further down, or having it a little bit higher up, but having more armor. Currently just going with 100 millimeter rounds, and we are using just the one meter shells. I'll probably be changing this, but let's just see how it, you know, works. As you can see, the shells don't really do all that much each, but there's so many of them, you're likely to hit something vital. There we go, there goes one of the guns. That is so little damage per shell. So that's a uh, 250 rounds per minute gun. Quite cheap, and it uses no belt fed loaders. This is using purely the regular auto loaders. We could use belt fed and massively increase the fire rate. Yeah, I mean, if we had three of those going at once, that would be tearing things apart very quickly. How expensive is the plunder, anyway? Okay, so that's 15,000 volume, and that's the cost of it. So, yeah, if we end up at the 100 to 150,000 mark, that's fine. Would like to be able to use it a bit earlier, though. Though saying that, the drone ships will be able to have at least some storage themselves. Especially with how little they use. Yeah, it's not that impactful, is it, these shells? As soon as it starts hitting a piece of stacked metal, it does almost nothing. So yeah, this is like the one time we can use this particular type of shell. We could try out frag. Hmm. So here it is with three guns. This would just about bring it to 101,000 resource. I mean, that looks bloody cool, I gotta be honest. I did a quick test of fragments, and yeah, the fragment is also very good at this size. I say very good, it's, it's equal to what the explosions are doing here, the high explosive, at least from my minimal testing. But I don't really care. There's the thing, people who have a go at me for not playing the meta sometimes, I just want the shiny things. Saying that, people also have a go at me when I do play the meta. Either I'm playing too meta or not meta enough. I just want to be just right. I want to be the third bowl of porridge, you know? I just play what's fun. And that is bloody fun. Yeah, against the lighter armor segments, that just shreds. And the shells are so slow, they're probably not going to do well versus flyers or anything too quick. Which, again, I like at the moment, since I am trying to go more for more specialist stuff. I'm tempted to go with two of those instead. And look how weird that looks when it's just on top of the hull. <laughs> just for that test. I'm tempted to go with two, and then go with a torpedo system. We could even have it on the deck for one, so we fire the torpedoes off the deck, which would look really nice. Have them my turret. Not sure. Definitely going to have at least two of them, though. So what we could do is have one at the front, one at the back, then the torpedo system in the middle, then we can have the bridge here. Obviously, the main point of this craft is resource management for the rest of the, uh, the fleet, but also just to be a tank. The question is, what would be more expensive? A small missile system, one of these. They're about, well, they're close to 30,000 each. 
No, that can't be right. The must cost us 25,000, yeah. In the end, the guns in their current state are 26,500 each. I'm now testing out just two of them. I mean, two of them still get the job done. Not that quickly, but... That gun's pretty much shredded. That gun's damaged. They're not likely to completely obliterate foes, but because they're just hitting so many places with okay-ish damage, it's almost 2,000 explosive damage per shell. They do have the potential of stopping even larger targets in their tracks. Not fast targets, though. Because here's the thing, if we just have two of these, that gives me, well, it gives me an extra 27,000 resources to work on armor and the engines and everything else. 150 is the hard limit in terms of cost of this vehicle, since I do want it to be out and in battles before we finish off the deep water. God, honestly, before we have much territory, I want this and a few of the drone ships. Though I am also repairing the aircraft at the moment, they're almost fully fixed. You know, yeah, I think we're going to go with two of those, and then a very small missile system, well, a very small torpedo system, um, maybe in the middle. So I'm thinking one gun at the back, one gun at the front, then the torp system can be there. Or we could go with both guns at the front, so this gun can stay there, or perhaps shimmy a little bit forwards. This gun goes there, rests about here. Hello. Rests about here. Then we have the bridge, which will probably be quite stumpy, because that's how this thing's being built, and then we could have the torpedo system at the back. It also means we could armor up the back a little bit more since we don't have anything really going into the hull. You know, I think that's what we're going to go with. It does mean we're going to push the bridge a bit further back than I was originally intending, though. So these are 250mm shells. They're doing much better versus the armor and, well, they're doing better all round. These do over double the damage of the 100mm. The fire rate is actually over half of the 100mm, so the overall damage per second is a lot higher, and the shells are going at least 100 meters per second faster. Yeah, this is likely the gun I'm going to use. We could still make it way stronger, but again, bear in mind, these are quite small turrets. We should fire a bit more, you know, above the water. Note self, set up the AI. Yeah, you know, I think I will go with these. Neither of them are making a stupidly powerful impact, but that was just one of the turrets. If we have two or three of these, then yeah, it's going to stack up fairly quickly. Again, should you just be using pure high explosive at this size? Probably not. Do I care? No. So that's as far forward as I can move that gun before it starts becoming a problem in terms of being able to defend it. I don't mind that one, but the one at the back I really don't like, but I also don't want to move it further into the core. I also don't want the bridge to be that big, honestly, so putting that here might be a problem as well. So currently what I'm thinking is gun here, gun here, torpedo section at the back, bridge which will help to defend the torpedo section from the front, the bridge of course be just purely there for looks, maybe for the detection system. So, like, that. I am really terrible at designing the layout of ships. I don't know if anyone's noticed. But look at this chunky boy. We are just about to hit 10,000 volume, and we are almost done. Now, I wanted this to look stumpy, but I think I've gone a bit too far with that. This thing is... weird looking. But I kind of like it, so I don't really mind too much. I don't mind the weird style, so that's okay. The bridge is very stout, honestly, but, you know, it's somewhere for us to stand somewhat safely. Going to add the detection system on top here, so it's going to be on a swivel. On a swivel? On a turret. It's going to probably add some detection systems to the turrets themselves, so we have a little bit of redundancy. Not too much, but a little bit. And then they can transmit to the drone ships, or drone boats, since they are really just little gunboats. Now, how am I actually going to add the torpedo section? That is the question. We could add it over here, as I was originally intending, but I don't, just don't like the idea of having too much weaponry at the back like that. Or we could just add it to the sides of the craft. I'm not too sure. So, how am I going to add the torpedo system to the back? Well, one thing to note is that I'm very tempted to move the bridge a bit further back, but also... 
We are hitting our volume limit. We are already on 10.5k. The original goal was 10k, so we're already over it. But this is pretty much it. This is the last thing we really need to add. We can add more material storage, which is not all that much volume. We have plenty of armor already. We're almost completely done. Cost-wise, though, we're actually really far off. Originally, the goal was 150,000 at tops, um, a soft limit of 100,000. We've just gone over the 100,000 mark since we're only going with two advanced cannons. So we're never going to hit that 150,000, which is great. And this craft is very, very easy to upgrade. We can lengthen the hull quite easily to make it look a bit more natural later on. We can upgrade the weapons very easily. We have loads of space for it. And yeah, there's loads of things we can do. So this is a craft I think I'm going to keep on retrofitting moving forwards, despite the fact it looks so weird. Now, how am I going to do this? Originally, I wanted to go with these, the rail launchers since I was looking at the small versions, but it turns out, when it comes to medium and above, the rails are actually more expensive than the regulars, which is a bit weird in my eyes. I guess it's because you can build them forwards and backwards, like this. Where- okay, let's actually yeah, place it properly, shall we? <laughs> that was a bit of a- wow, how did I even do that? There we go. Which is a thing, and I think it looks really nice with the rails, especially the medium size. But yeah, the fact it's more expensive is a little bit off-putting, since I'm not really gaining anything out of it other than looks. But I do really, really like how that looks. And I think it'd be super easy to make a really simple system like that. But you could easily do the same with these. So I'm thinking is maybe we have five, and then we have an armoured cap on it, and just make it really flat like this. We can easily have all the missile controller stuff inside, and then the local weapon controller can go underneath the hull. In fact, we could have the turret itself go underneath the hull. Yeah, that would be best as well, depending on the, um, the turret piece. Okay, gonna break open the hull a bit, well, at least the deck, and let's see what we can do. Testing out some basic torps. Yep, these fire them a little bit later, because that did look kind of silly. Decent speed, they have target prediction guidance. They won't be the strongest in the world, but... Yeah, need more of a uh, delay, but that was pretty nice. Eh, uh, was it though? Now, what's this wooden armor? It's nice guaranteed damage, that's the thing, and very few things can count them. Oh, I've just realized they don't have um, ballast tanks, which means they're going to be awful versus subs. Yeah, more of a delay is needed. Okay. I'm actually happy enough with the, the uh, firepower of this thing. It isn't overwhelming, but it's definitely going to get the job done. And I am warming to how this thing looks. I mean, it kind of looks like angry Lego. I love Lego. More of a delay this time. Perfect. And this time they actually have ballast tanks, so as you can see, they're hitting underneath the target, which is exactly what you want. Lovely. A nice bit of extra damage to start the fight off. And again, it's guaranteed damage, and because it's as the ballast tanks, it means it can now target subs a little bit better. So, I'll armor up that, add the detection systems, for once I'll actually finish off the detection systems before I finish the episode. They will give it a proper test run against something far stronger than it, see if it can survive it, since, once again, this isn't about its firepower, it's about how tanky it is. Basic detection system is now online, we are no longer using the auto-detect, and we actually seem to be doing better. Which is to be expected, since you can customise your manual detection, whereas the auto-lock tends to be set to um, quite general settings, which can be a bit off. Yeah, it's just fine. And that's just with this little tiny turret on top, which I think is adorable. I actually really like this boat. <laughs> it's so silly. But it makes things go boom! And that's the best type of silly. Auto detection is off. Auto healing is off. Let's give it a test versus the plunderer. Not very well positioned. This is going to give the plunderer some advantages. Though saying that, we are both facing each other. And even the plunderer does want to try and broadside. So, the main thing I'm interested in is will we survive the initial cram attack? The plunderer is a full, well, a full 110,000 more materials than we are, and 3,000 more volume, so it's bigger and more expensive. But at the same time, it is deep water guard, so it is built to a set of rules. 
There go our torpedoes. Oh, and then we miss. And it isn't really using much in the way of stacked armor, so even our weaker shell should be quite nasty. If we hit the correct places, which we apparently are not. Okay, initial hits doing very little. Our center is definitely our strong point. Kind of wish it hit with that initial attack, though. That's the main thing I was testing with, so I might have to do this fight again afterwards. Now, hit the guns more. Oh, okay, one of the guns is badly damaged. Here we go. Once again, hitting the core, doing very little, knocking off all the little bit of side armor, but of course, we have stacked armor, so the armor value of the outermost layer is very, very high. My weapons have been turned off. And here comes another attack from our torps. One of them completely missing there, well done. And well done to continuous damage. Yeah, the main weapons have been turned off. We are victorious versus the plunderer. This by no means really means our craft is particularly good. It just means it's good versus the expert quality of the Deepwater Guard when it's fighting essentially what it's meant to be fighting against. Oh no, another plunderer has appeared. This time, please hit us. Okay, we need faster turning. That's something I didn't even consider. Yeah, that initial the initial attack always misses in the sandbox mode when you spawn things in. Torp's doing some good work there, actually. Knocking off a lot from the side. Right now, I'm not using inertial fuses. The reason is I wanted more explosive damage, and shields have been... Honestly, not a huge threat in previous tests. And I think we've knocked out its detection system or something because it just fired forwards. And I say that about the shields. I've actually seen a lot of deflects. Maybe inertial fuses might be worth it. Though only shields are deflecting them. As long as the shell hits the target, I haven't seen a single deflect. Overall, very happy with the results. Though I am going to stop us now. And I'm going to have a test where we get hit. I'm essentially just going to sit here and wait. This will be the second wave of grams from this test. Ah, a lot of them are exploding before they actually hit the target. That actually explains quite a lot. Oh, big explosion. Ooh. Oh, I found a weak spot. Okay. And that was from the torp. Almost sure of it. I guess it could be crams. I mean, essentially just something hit quite low down and managed to undermine the turret. Okay, that's actually a really easy fix, thankfully, because um, the turrets right now have stupidly long necks because they're going forward from the bottom to the top. All we need to do is remove a bit of that neck, put the turret a little bit higher, and have some armor on the bottom, and then that will be pretty much that. Still, though, being hit by a lot of cram shells. Uh, one of the sections of armor has opened up. This corner and this corner is actually the weakest part of the core. So it makes sense that's been snapped open. Yeah, the corners seem to be the places I've neglected. Okay, thank you. Now to do some fixes. Whoops, did not mean to spawn in two, but there we are. Stop firing, please. Stay still. And maybe shouldn't have uh, stayed still after they'd fired. Okay, some hits. That's fine. As you can see, I've now armored up that section more. The corners are now much stronger than they were. We are now at 12.2 thousand volume. Yep, that under bit of armor actually worked exactly as it should have. Perfect. Sometimes the simple dumb solution is actually the smart solution we all needed along the way. I'm just a floating brick of armor. I can't survive two plunderer attacks directly on that main weapon. Well, that's not exactly surprising. Oh, and for those wondering, there is... Well, yeah, there was metal armor underneath the wooden decking all the way across. 
so it isn't just like a layer of wood and then all of our vital components. Hmm, how did that break? Was it the turret cap? It looks like the actual turret cap itself broke that time. Well, there's little we can do about that unless we increase the size of the turret cap or perhaps use heavy armor. I don't particularly want to do either of those. I guess that's what happens though when you have a high gauge cram just smash right into your face. I mean, look! The gun room is still safe. So if it didn't hit directly on the weapon, that wouldn't have gone through. And considering we cast half of one of these, yeah, that's not too bad. We can't survive everything. There's the thing. We can't survive, like, six crams directly on the turret cap. That's gonna cause an explosion. Even if all the explosives are under... Ooh, the hole. The back gun still survived, though. We still fire? Then we should be able to, right? Hello. Oh. Yeah, with no detection equipment now. <laughs> Yeah, we need to put detection equipment on the guns themselves, otherwise this will happen. Okay. Final things, then. Um, the actual room itself is incredibly sturdy. That's good. The underplating did really, really well versus the torpedoes. That's great. This room is still more vulnerable because there's nothing really there, but the actual core itself is still safe. Yeah, that actually did a lot better than I expected. So, going to fix this up once again. Do a little bit of work on the turret caps, I guess. And, um, what else? Um, don't really know, honestly. Having the torps so exposed like that is just going to make them vulnerable. It's just the way it is. But I love them being there like that. We could extend the bridge back and have a secondary building section, which would actually make it look a lot more realistic. But also, it would provide a bit of protection from the top there. We could also extend this over the turret cap. Though at this point, we're just adding more volume. By just adding more and more volume, we're kind of defeating the purpose of this. And for once, I've built underneath the cap I set myself. Maybe we should leave it like that. But we do have some excess money. So I think uh, going with heavy armor for these and maybe just bulking out the bottom section of the turret caps is probably all we can really do. And that won't cost too much. Uh, same underneath the um, decking here. There is a layer of metal. And then it has the um, the neck piece, and then another two layers of metal after a gap. Perhaps instead it should be a layer of heavy armor, then the gap. How much more expensive is heavy armor? Oh, so much more. Five times as much. But we're only replacing like six or seven pieces per turret. Let's see how much it would cost. I just looked back at the footage, and yeah, one of the shells hit right there. So that's what caused the problem. One hit there, and then one hit directly underneath a second lighter. I rewatched like three or four times. I don't think it was this giving way, because there's just too much there. So I think it was just the neck just got directly hit. And we could just bring this metal around, but then that does limit how we can turn. How do I want to do this? So, a few more notes before our final, final test. So, it turns out, one good thing is that when this got knocked off, it didn't actually lose everything. It didn't lose the entire system. So, we didn't have a chain reaction causing our shells to go off or anything else. The bottom of the turret was still there. All that happened was, quite literally, the neck got broken, which then took out the entire turret cap. But that's it. That's actually not that expensive. So, losing that is annoying. It could lose us a fight, but if we still win the fight, we haven't lost that much resource. Now, the PID system still needs to be balanced. As you can probably see, we're now way too low in the water since I haven't changed any of the settings, but I've made the craft heavier. I've now added some heavy armor just underneath the decking there and just on the top of the decking in a few more vulnerable sections. Uh, around the bottom here, I've added some heavy armor as well. That isn't all that much, but it should provide protection against some lighter hits. I've added some basic detection to the turret caps. We kind of need more, but that should be fine, at least for the testing purposes. We're almost done. Just going to mess with the PID, then we'll have a proper fight again with the plunderer. And I think we're good to go for the campaign. We have two very small ships, one medium-ish ship here, and we have our aircraft. And all I need to do with the aircraft is just fix the cram cannons. They currently have the cram bombers, and I need to fix their jets. Because the jets have been reworked, so is the cram, and the balance is all off. The final fight. Okay, let's see what happens to these grams. 
Yeah, most of them was detonated in the water, so it didn't really affect us at all there. Loving the constant damage of those guns. I mean, they're not devastating, but it's just that consistent damage they're doing. Okay, one of them hit there. Hit the corner. All that armor stacking did absolutely nothing. One of the turrets is already offline. Now it's completely offline. Okay, two turrets offline. Only the back weapon remains as a threat. Well, that and torps, if they're still being used. Wow. Oh, come on, there's a few more hits there. Now, of course, I could get away with not using inertial fuses. Ooh. If I use things like the hollow point head, since they have essentially a fuse built in. Wait, does that still go off with shields? I don't think it does now I've said that. Maybe it does. But I still think it is worth just not having the fuse element on these shells. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Okay, a minor weak spot there. Oh wait, no, because that's closed off. Never mind, no, it's not even a weak spot because there's nothing in the room. I think this will do just fine. Well, I've just looked at the time, and I am really all out of time for today's video. I've just added some more material storage in the form of two of the cargo containers. They are super heavily armoured in the core. I still had space for them, so I didn't really have to do all that much. The core can keep them safe, just like the AI, so we shouldn't lose the material storage unless we lose our AI and just lose the ship anyway. So that's absolutely fine. As we've seen, the core is very difficult to crack, at least with the expert-style enemies. Against the godlies, like the crossbones, it's hard to tell. But I don't really want to fight this thing against the crossbones, because of the sheer disparity in resources and size. We can have three of these versus the crossbones, and then it'll be a fair fight. So, with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. And the final specs of this thing are 130,000 in terms of resources, and 12.7k in terms of volume. I may remove a little bit of that after I do a few more checks and I am going to be looking back at the footage and checking for any other weak points and doing a few more tests so don't worry if I've missed something it will be fixed before we end up in the campaign overall though really happy with this it's on the heavier side than what I wanted but cheaper than I expected so yep really happy with this definitely going to be using it a lot in the campaign at least versus the deep water guard gonna need more upgrades after that thank you so much for watching and goodbye